Many have already made videos about who's stronger, Madara or Ishiki, and they constantly talk about the peak of one or another. I don't like comparing the strength of characters unless the author himself does it. As in my opinion, it's all just fan speculation. To truly compare the strength of two characters, you need to consider everything, including their character. For instance, two good characters wouldn't start killing each other just because fans want it, as that would change the character's nature. But still, who's stronger, Madara or Ishiki? And what is the peak of power constantly talking? about. Enjoy watching. I'll answer the question of who would win, they both die. Why? Because that's how the author made it. Let me explain. When you talk about Madara's peak, you have to understand that he's always countered. He's countered by Black Zetsu, which impales him through the chest, after which Kaguya resurrects in him. This will always happen because you can't remove this fact. If you remove this moment, it becomes a fan theory. So, in any battle, as seen in the anime, Madara will ultimately lose. Because, as soon as his body is ready for Kaguya's revival, Zetsu will bring back his mother. This this is Madara's peak the readiness to resurrect Kaguya in him. Now, Ishiki's peak. We've seen him in the Boruto anime, and this peak involves being reborn in his broken vessel, thanks to which he can live only for a few hours. After this time, the character disintegrates. Regardless of whom he defeats before this moment, he will still die. His full strength won't even be revealed due to his death. This is the peak of these two characters, as we consider the peak of power in the anime and manga. But for some reason, nobody takes this into account and starts comparing incomparable things. Everyone forgets that we've never seen Ishiki's peak. When people talk about a peak, I think they mean the true power, the most potent version. But we haven't seen that. You can't just remove the author's facts and say it's the new peak. When it comes to comparing these two characters, some people disregard the fact that Ishiki will disintegrate if he starts using his true power. So, in a battle with Madara, the same thing would happen as with Naruto and Sasuke. He wouldn't fight at full strength because the more he uses his techniques, the stronger they become, the less time he has. So, we can't even know what other techniques the character could use. We'll probably see Ishiki's true peak in the future, thanks to Kawaki, as he will use his power with the genes of the Otsutsuki. The eye that Ishiki possesses seemingly belonged to Shibai, based on information from the manga, so that would likely make him much stronger than what we saw in the anime. But this is still speculation, and it's pointless to base any arguments on it. Thus, comparing the strength of these characters is impossible. However, many people seem to think that Madara would win. They bring up the eternal Tsukuyomi as the argument, which doesn't work on Otsutsuki. Even the omnipotence doesn't work on this clan, as all these techniques are created to manipulate mortals. And there is number 100% guarantee that this technique will definitely work on the Otsutsuki. The battle between these two would be straightforward. They would clash, and eventually, Ishiki would disintegrate due to his time running out, and Kaguya would be reborn in Madara. And this is the only outcome, considering the peak you mean. Madara's peak, I'll repeat, is complete readiness for Kaguya's resurrection. Any of Ishiki's peaks would result in his disintegration. Story-wise, this battle could be made epic, but the victor would depend on the plot, not strength, as we don't yet know Ishiki's true peak. Stop removing the fact that Madara is simply a vessel for Kaguya. His fate was written by the author. All comparisons where Kaguya doesn't resurrect within him are just fan versions of Madara and have no connection to the original. So, they would both lose, as this is their peak. Comparing these two characters is pointless. Just like comparing other characters, as it will all be non-canon, but fan assumptions. These are just like alternative storylines. And 100% of the time, the character who is preferred by someone will win. To compare their strength, you need to consider everything. Chakra reserves, techniques, how much chakra these techniques consume, physical strength, how long the character can fight without resting, mental abilities, the landscape, which can sometimes help in battle, information on which technique would work on the Otsutsuki, and whether there's regeneration ability, how strong it is, whether there's a limit, and many other little nuances. After gathering this information, which will be confirmed canonically, you can compare one character to another, and despite all this, your assumption will still be wrong. Some people won't accept it just because they prefer Madara as a character. No matter how many arguments you present, Madara is a deity. Even Satama worships him. Therefore, I consider comparing characters meaningless. No one takes into account everything I listed earlier. But if you're simply interested in my opinion on who would win, Madara or Ishiki, then they would both lose. Who is more brilliant, Itachi or
Dear Minato, here you also need to consider a very large number of factors. Their thinking depends on the environment in which they grew up. Describing brilliance is not suitable for comparison, so it would be correct to ask, in your opinion, which character is stronger, Itachi or Minato? And here I'll answer, I don't care. I don't care because it doesn't matter. According to the canon, they never crossed paths. That's the answer. We would never know who is stronger. If the author says Itachi, then it's him. If he says Minato is stronger, there are no questions. But many are not satisfied with such an answer. Even after this video, everyone will continue to ask who is stronger. And the answer will always be evident. The plot is stronger. Because it can turn any character into a vegetable or vice versa. All our assumptions, whether Ishiki or Madara, Kaguya or Mamashiki will win, will be nothing more than alternative stories, which many hate, but still continue to argue about who is stronger, thereby creating alternative versions of the characters. No matter how much you may like Madara, you must understand that, setting aside all his grandeur, he is just a puppet of Black Zetsu. All the power he gained, thanks to Zetsu. The entire Achiha clan were puppets of Zetsu. Madara would not have become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki without him. He would not have been resurrected without him. I understand that you like the character, but there's no need to claim that he would defeat everyone just because he's your favorite. And most importantly, stop removing what makes the character canonical. And that's the death of Ishiki in any case and the rebirth of Kaguya and Madara in any case. There is no other peak in the manga or anime, and if you remove these events, then it's your own character, fictional. Also, stop adding techniques to the character that, in your opinion, they should have. Moreover, stop saying that the eternal Tsukiyomi works on the Otsutsuki, as there is no information anywhere that this clan is susceptible to its own technique. And now, I'm waiting for your opinions in the comments. Good luck to everyone.